What's up, guys, and welcome to episode 41 of the Yard Podcast. I'm your host, Randy. And I'm your host, Clonu. And on today's episode, we have everything you need to know about the latest negotiations going on between the owners, players unions, when spring training will begin, the recent free agent signings, and what some of these may mean for the Dodgers. Um, Arenado's finally out of the NL West and a lot more to talk about. So if you haven't already, do us a favor and hit that subscribe button and let's go ahead and get into this. Um, First thing I need to touch on, wish I didn't have to, uh, shouldn't have to be having these conversations, but we are because they're important. So didn't talk about it last week, Um, needs to be talked about this week. So we are going to. Last week, we heard the news about Jared Porter harassing a former female sports reporter by constantly blowing up her phone, sending explicit photos she did not ask for, all of that awful stuff. Um, Now this week, we are hearing about Mickey Calloway basically doing the same exact thing to multiple women over the last few years across three organizations. The Indians, the Mets, and the Angels, who are all, of course, going to deny knowing anything about this and are going to act surprised and disgusted over something that they'll say they never knew about, Uh, yet plenty of women were sharing their stories with one another across the sport, and we're supposed to believe somebody in power never heard about this Um, in any of these organizations. I have a very hard time believing. Is MLB's vetting process just that much of a joke? Do they not care? Um, Because as a woman, that's how it feels. Sandy Alderson hired both of these men to the Mets, yet seems to hold no burden as to how their hiring process has completely failed women working in sports, and that two of these men have both come through their organization and have somehow knew nothing about it. Um, It just... I find it hard to believe there seems to be no accountability except for the teams going, hey, it's this one person's fault. We're going to do better. Yet these teams don't have anything held against them. They get off easy. They fire the person he's gone and they keep going about their uh, business and it keeps happening. And it feels like this is only the beginning and it's going to be filled with a lot more of this stuff coming out. Um, And these women should speak out. I have so much respect for every single one of them uh, because this isn't easy. It's hard. We unfortunately see the comments all over the internet about what people have to say. Um, And honestly, they don't need to come out with their names because there's no reason that their job in sports media should have to be ruined over um, someone being a gross asshole. So it really is this simple, everybody. Um, If a woman doesn't show interest in your advances, move on, leave her alone. Don't bombard our phones. Don't send us nudes or shirtless selfies just because you think we want to see them. Don't make us feel uncomfortable because you have your own issues to work out. Let us do our jobs without making us feel like we have no choice but to be nice to you. Treat us like you treat a male reporter. At the end of the day, we're all trying to do the same exact damn thing as every other man is out there. We don't want any, we don't want any special treatments. We want to earn our spots in this business and work for it. Um, And really, I'm just tired of hearing of shit like this. And I just, I I needed to say it. I need to get it off my chest. I know Konu, you have some stuff to say, so I'm going to go ahead and pass that your way. Yeah. um, For the love of me, I cannot understand why men can't just take no for an answer. Like you said, if a woman's not interested, just move on. Like what is the purpose? Respect her wishes and just leave it at that. This really isn't that difficult um, rich, mediocre ass white men simply can't take no for an answer. They feel entitled and above everything. They feel appalled. They can't believe that a woman would turn them down. Get the fuck over yourselves. You're not that special. If she's not open to your advances, that just needs to be the end of it, period. No questions asked. I promise you, it's okay to be rejected. Uh, there are other women who there are other women will be other women out there for you as long as you're not a fucking creep it's 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 honestly ridiculous and so guys just take the l like a man and move on it's not hard at all i promise yeah it's it's a really unfortunate conversation and it's all over twitter and i've said my piece and you've said your piece and that really is all to it just it it, it's both sides of thing i just stop fucking doing things people ask you not to do. It's pretty, it's so simple. Um, But with that said, I do want to to get into the baseball stuff because there is a lot of stuff, not a lot of stuff I want to say. We did get some news over the last 24, 48 hours that finally gave us a date for baseball when it's beginning. So uh, let's talk about that. This whole off season, we've been waiting to hear what would be going on with the 2021 season. And on Friday, the owners sent the players union an offer. 
this offer included a 154 game schedule at full pay, extended playoffs, DH in the NL, and the regular season would start a month later than usual and end a week later than usual. The players rejected this offer and didn't offer a counter proposal, meaning baseball will be starting on time. Uh, spring training begins February 17th with players reporting. Dodgers' first spring training game is scheduled for fe February 27th against the Cubs. Uh, fans are expected to be at games. They will not allow fans at any of the workouts, no matter the team, doesn't matter the state, but they do expect most teams to allow capacity at games up to 25%. Do not have any information on tickets. We'll get that to you guys as soon as we have it. There's a lot of people wondering why the players did not accept this deal. The owners are coming in and saying, if we push this a month back, it, it, it's safer. It'll get more vaccinations. Yes, they are correct. I call total bullshit that that's the reason they care. I don't think they care about the health. I think they want an excuse to get more fans into the game so they can make more money by getting more vaccines out and pushing this back another month that allows us to do it. The players, which a lot of fans aren't understanding, which makes sense because we're not always involved in this side of stuff. However, the players don't want to do this, understandably so, because they have a CBA in place. The collective bargaining agreement is already the the deal they have in place. They do not have to make a deal with MLB. It is not their job to make a deal with MLB because if they do, it then opens up negotiations for other things that they may not want to talk about right now. Um, at the same time, there are players in Arizona training and Florida training for that matter. There are Airbnbs that have been booked. There are pitchers who have started their throwing programs that have them lined up for an April 1st opening day. Last year, we saw a major rise in injuries. Um, you had players ramp up to full, basically full strength almost midway through spring training, not 100% full strength, but you're going pretty hard at that point as a pitcher. Um, and then all of a sudden you just stop and then seasons put on hold. Nobody knows when they're going back. And then all of a sudden they have a two week or a one week notice, Hey, get out there, play. And then we saw injuries all over the place with pitchers. Um, they don't want to put themselves through that again, which I don't blame them, especially with a new CBA. You don't want to worry about injuries. You don't want to worry about all of this kind of stuff going into a new season, 2022 free agents, all of that good stuff. Um, so as usual, like it always is with MLB, it's a mess. However, <laughs> Uh, MLB released a statement last night saying they told their clubs to report on time. So I guess we're getting baseball this month. Uh, I'm excited. I, it's, a, it's a different feeling than last year where I was kind of like, it was hard to be excited because, hey, we're in the middle of a pandemic. pandemic. Like, how can I get excited about the players going out there and playing during this? But this time around, it's like, the players have already come out and said they're more worried about injuries than the virus, which I get it. They're healthy. They're young. They're in shape. They're not too concerned about the virus doing any real damage to them. Um, but we're already seeing every other major sport play. We've already seen baseball do this safely, and they all stayed healthy for the most part. There were a couple uh, players like Eduardo Rodriguez that we heard about had some issues come out of it. He seems to be doing okay now. Uh, but... I would have been okay with season being pushed back. I think what I'm excited about is just the fact we have a date. It feels so good to finally have a date to know this is when we get to watch baseball. Like I, I, I don't know about you, uh, but this just kind of gave me a little bit of hope. Like, Hey, we finally know what's going on. Now let's really start digging into what we're going to see from the Dodgers and this team this year. Uh, yeah. I mean, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. You said everything I was going to say. Uh, the one thing is though, I, I am a little sad about the the no DH just because again I hate watching pitchers hit. Um, so and of course, Manfred. Actually, would... I I hate to cut you off, but I do want to say they did say the DH and expanded playoffs still could be discussed. It's that the pushing back of the season doesn't sound like it's going to happen, but it does sound okay. like DH and expanded playoffs still could be negotiated. Uh, but we at so, least have a start date. It it sounds like the players don't really want extended playoffs and I know for sure fans don't want it so of course Manfred ties that to something that's actually more popular than I thought it was going to be um it seems like a lot of fans have have liked the universal DH I know the players some players have liked it uh managers liked it so of course Manfred ties it to something that's wildly unpopular um to try to get what he wants I, I do applaud the players for sticking to their guns uh because you know fuck Manfred and the other billionaires but um I don't know. It's I'm glad there's going to be baseball sometime this month. It's going to be exciting. Um, but also the Dodgers have some holes to fill, so they might need to hurry up and just sign turn and get this over with and move on. Cause you know, yeah, two which, weeks they have to which start I, reporting. 
which I was going to go over a little bit, like what's going on here. Players are supposed to be there literally two weeks, I think from tomorrow, like report day is two weeks from tomorrow. Teams aren't still fully set. So there's, there's a lot that has to be uh, discussed and figured out. We might be in for a while, a couple of weeks, guys. Yeah. It might be a lot of like, we were all worried like, Oh, when are these free agents going to be signing? We shit. If this is, if by next week, there is nothing that's like, Oh, we're pushing this back, which I don't see happening. I have a f- feeling we're just going to see a flurry of signings because teams are like, we've got to have guys there. And yep. if I'm a player, I want to be at spring training on the report date, practicing with my team, not having to stress out and worry. So, uh, Hey, we've been complaining that we want them to do something. Maybe this is the type of sped up pace we're all going to be hoping for. So we'll see how these next two weeks go. Uh, but I'm excited. I'd be lying to say if I wasn't, I'm looking forward to this. I can't wait. And uh, if you are going to a game, all I'm going to say is please be safe and follow protocols because I cannot wait to actually hear fans on the TV cheering for teams. And so I, I want to hear all that again. So just please be safe and follow the team's protocols and everything so we can actually have those things filled at a hundred percent capacity before the end of this year. But to move on to some Dodger news, um, it feels like, I mean, granted, it depends how you feel about each individual person. But it feels like we're losing a lot of our long-term people uh, lately. It's all, of course, been players. But unfortunately, the broadcasting team took a hit this last week. Um, Alana Rizzo announced that she was stepping away from baseball and would no longer be working for the Dodgers. This is not something bad that happened between her and the team. It is... And it is something Alana chose to do on her own. She said for the first time in her life, she's putting her personal life before her professional life. Uh, So I completely respect her for that. It sucks. She's been with the team for so long uh, about, I think it's been six years now, five or six years, seven years. And I loved her. I've gotten to build, I don't want to say a friendship, but I've gotten to know her over social media, seen her at games, talk to her. Um, And she just felt like she was a part of the team. You saw her every night on TV talking about the players. She kept us updated. So uh, I just want to say good luck to her and everything she is doing in her professional life. I'm going to keep a close eye on what she's doing with Gidry's Guardian, her dog uh, foundation. And that she loves baseball. I will say that because she said she's not retiring and she said she's stepping away from baseball. Yet she has been on Twitter talking about everything going on all morning. So uh Her love for that sport is still there and we just wish her the best at anything uh, she's doing. And on to prospects, we finally got the top 100 list for the 2021 season. And it's a little weird only seeing two Dodgers in the top 100 for the first it's this is the least amount of players the Dodgers have had in the top 100 since MLB pipeline expanded the list in 2012. And those two players I feel like are pretty obvious with Kyber Ruiz coming in at 57 and Josiah right behind him at 58. Uh, we don't have much to say about them. We talk about them a lot. You guys know about them. Once we actually can watch them play baseball, we'll talk about them a little bit more. Uh, it's not really though much of a surprise that the Dodgers only have two guys in there because you have to remember guys like Lux May and Gratterall were all promoted in 2020 and no longer considered prospects. Uh, but they did note that guys like, which I know you're a fan of, you'll appreciate these, but Michael Bush, Cody Hosey, Diego Cartaya, and Bobby Miller will all break the top 100 at some point in their near future. So might be a short time, might be a quick point that the Dodgers are on the list with just a couple guys, but it should not stay that way for um, very long. So I, I will say this is the first list I've seen where um, Ruiz is ahead of Gray. Same um, here. It, so, like, on other lists, Ruiz finds himself at five behind Gray, Bobby Miller, Michael Bush, and Andy Pages. Um, but to be fair to Ruiz, he has had some injury issues. Um, Ruiz kind of seems like a guy who is – he does everything good but nothing great. He's like a jack-of-all-trades, master of none kind of thing. Um, but before this offseason, it was obvious that these were the top two. Now, as the offseason has gone along – Bush and Miller and Pages has kind of risen to the top of a lot of lists. Which, like, um, can we figure out how are they playing baseball? Can we watch them? Like, how are they moving up in the rankings without any bases? Like, is there something? I know Bush did some Arizona Fall League stuff. I think. Okay. I was, um, like, are we missing something? I think something? Pages Cause... might be playing in the Dominican Republic. I'm not 100 okay. percent sure. But um, yeah, so I know those three have really started to rise, and I, I really do. I can't wait to watch them play because I am high on all those people especially like Bobby Miller 
you oh, you like Bob, Bobby Bobby Miller. yeah he, right because I was gonna say he's he seems to be getting a lot of talk around him lately um and I have not seen him stop working out at Dodger Stadium he was just there last week posting on his Instagram story throwing uh he's been in LA for months now just non-stop throwing so uh I'm makes sense you, didn't have a I keep season saying it but that that one game they had where it was like an inter squad game during the season and he came in, I forgot, what, in, in the middle innings, but he looked great. He was pitching like it was a goddamn playoff game. And I was like, you know what? I respect this dude. He was striking people out with, like, runners on base and fired up about it. And I was like, okay, he, he's, he's competitive as hell because this is just a nothing game. But a lot of players are taking it seriously. He took it seriously, and it, it was nice to see. And a lot of people think he's going to slot in at number two right behind Bueller, and I can 100% see that. Yeah. And I mean this in the most respectful way. Like, I don't mean it in a bad way at all, but the dude like is obsessed with Bueller. So the whole competitive edge makes sense. Uh, he loves Bueller. He talked about how he watches Bueller, looks up to him. He's the type of pitcher he wants to be like, uh, which makes sense. I see it a lot in him with the fire and the way he pitches and the energy he pitches. Uh, him and Bueller look like they'd be a pretty fun one, two punch up there in the start of that rotation. And then for Dustin years May. <laughs> yeah. Dustin, Dustin May is a little bit of a psychopath on his own too. I think yes. most pitchers are. But that's and what then, makes you, and then you have the um, then you have the calm, quiet person in Josiah Gray. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And Josiah, yeah, Josiah Gray looks like he's always smiling, happy, and gonna go out there and do his business. And then you look, you look at guys like Miller, Bueller, and May who look like they're just ready to go. They're waiting on the mound for you. Step in that box and let's do this. So I'm excited. Uh, Dodgers know how to develop. They know how to draft. Bobby Miller is one that I'm very, very excited for. Uh, I This is totally irrelevant. I'm just curious what you have to say. It won't be Cartaya, but out of Bush, I, I feel like it, Bush is the most likely one here, but I just want to see what you have to say. Bush, Hosey, or Miller, who do you think happens to break the big league roster first? It's got to be Bush, right? Would you think? Hosey. Really? Okay. I, I I don't know. You pay attention to him more just, than I do. Just because I I really don't know where the hell Bush is supposed to play. Okay. Unless his okay. fielding has improved that much, I just I don't see a That's way for right. him. On. Well, I guess if the DH does come back at a certain point, then he can do that. But do so I guess we it depends know, on the DH. Do we know if someone like Michael Bush, uh, which kind of leads into our next subject because we have to find a left fielder replacement because jock is gone so i'm gonna get into that in a second but do you think michael bush has any chance of playing left field or is that not even uh some scouts think he probably into some scouts think that if he were to be semi-decent at left field he would break the club with the dodgers being a starting left fielder okay. because his bat's that good see and to me that's interesting like i said leading into the next thing um jock it's reported he signed a one-year seven seven million dollar deal with the cubs so dodgers no longer have him there um i i don't want to just blow past this because jock's been with the team really long so i i do want to kind of give his 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 credit where he's due uh at the end of the day he was never this great like regular season player for us but when that dude showed up in october he got it done jocktober was a very real thing uh it was a very weird thing to me though how the switch from like set September or October, we all were a little bit worried in 2020 because he was struggling. He was going through some personal stuff, understandably so. His mind was probably not 100% on baseball. I don't blame him one bit. Um, but I really did not think there's any way Jock is flipping this switch this year. I did not think there was a way we're going to see 2020 regular season Jock and then go 2020 Jocktober. But the dude did it. Um, so I, I, I've got to say thank you, Jock, because you do it as always. Uh, that's probably our 2017 World Series MVP if we do not get screwed out of that World Series. Um, so it, it's going to be fun. to I'm, I'm excited to play him, to see the Dodgers face him. But it does lead to my question, who the hell takes up his spot? Because there's no way Pollock's playing full time, right? That just, that can't happen. I don't think it happens. He doesn't stay healthy. I don't think he'll be as good. Um We've talked about this in the past. Does Lux maybe somehow learn how to play left field? Because we've seen what goes on with his arm at second base. Um, and then we discussed guys like Zach McKinstry possibly playing at second base in the future. So you could move Lux to the outfield. So I'm kind of curious as to what you think. And we can go back to Bush as well. But what happens yeah, with so left field? For, first, I want to say um, congratulations to Jock. But there was a report that came out. <laughs> that the White Sox had offered him a, a one-year, ten million-dollar deal, and he turned uh, it down. He thought he was going to get more. 
Mm. Uh, if that report's true, Jockey kind of messed up because you went to the lesser of the Chicago teams. I know it's weird that the Cubs are the lesser of the Chicago teams, but they're the lesser of the Chicago teams. So you had I a, guess a the guaranteed... whole thing was he gets to play every day. I guess that's what the thing so was. The Cubs the are Cubs. allowing him to play every day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. You know what? More power. I to guess you. that's the, I guess luck. that's the thing then. Yeah. Um hey. Yeah. I, I'm not, I'm not going to miss the up and downs during the regular season. However, I, I will miss October. That was absolutely a lot of fun. Um, but as far as who's going to take his spot, I mean, if Bush can play left field, maybe Bush. Uh, McKinstry kind of plays all over the place anyway, so McKinstry could be there. So as of right now, I think it's Beatty and McKinstry who probably split time for, for Jock's spot. Um, there's an outside chance with someone like DJ Peters or Cody Thomas who both possess like insane power, but they also swing and miss much more than necessary. <laughs> uh, so it, those would probably be my guesses, but um, I, probably McKinstry. And there's now... Beatty has a good chance too as well though. And I also just thought about it too. There's there's not too many options. We don't really want Marcelo Zuna playing outfield. Uh, we need that right-handed bat, but we don't really want that defense out there. However, bringing up left field just kind of brought my mind back a second to we still need a third baseman. But how doesn't Chris Bryant play a little bit of left field too? He does, yeah. Like I, I know Bryant hasn't been brought up, but it just randomly came to my mind that like that would almost be a two kill birds, one stone. If Turner doesn't return, even if does, even if Turner does return, you can play Bryant in left field when Turner's at third base, or you put Bryant in third if for some reason the DH comes and you put Turner there if they resign him. There's so many I, ifs I, here. I just could do that. I think they might want someone who hits. I think they want someone to put to actually platoon with Pollock, so someone who hits righties. Yeah, that's like true. Like a jock did with that's why like even a Rosario signed. I forgot where he went. Anyway, that's why Rosario mm-hmm. made sense. Clearly, right. yes, I forgot. Yeah, they did bring up Ahmed that's Rosario. That's why that makes sense and because then... he kills right-handed pitching much like Jock does. Um, so I think that might be where they want to go with it. So I think that's why Beatty and McKinstry make the most sense. Um, yeah, I mean Rios yeah. would have been the. He's Rios. literally like Jock if he could learn how to play left field. I just don't know if that's in the books anywhere. I think um, he, I think he does. I think he plays first, third, and left. If I'm not okay. mistaken, I yeah. don't think he has that much time in left. But um, you know, he's. He I love how well at third. I love how left field's just like, hey, if you can play any position on the field, let's just throw. <laughs> if you could play anywhere in baseball, let's just try you out in left field. Like that's just I, that position I, I, I that everyone's kind of like, fuck it, you can go left field is the easiest to play. I think so. You know, I think, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to pretend like I know. I just, that's definitely how I view it based on how baseball views it. The, the <laughs> uh, summer camp guy. What's the summer camp guy's oh, name? Oh, Chico. 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 Yeah, put Chico on left. He got yeah. it. Hey. I saw him fielding out there. He can handle it just fine. Yeah, yeah exactly. He, I forget what position he played, but he played in college. So look at throwing and out he there. Throw, he threw out yeah. Gavin Lux too. Yeah, so and, like, I think and Chris Taylor. He threw one of them out at first, I think, and then one of them out at second, like tagging that, up to yes. second, and then he caught Lux going back to first, I think. So listen, just let him handle. He got it. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. So I don't know. There's a lot of things that could happen. Uh, that's why I think this next week or two could be crazy. I can't imagine what like Friedman's doing right now. Although part of me doubts that Friedman was ever stressing to begin with. He's probably had a plan in mind the whole time because that's what that man does. Uh, but when we talk about other potential moves, you, we do have to bring up the fact that Marcus Simeon signed a one-year deal with the Blue Jays. The Dodgers did show interest. Um, at the end of the day, I know a lot of Dodger fans weren't big on this move, but it does narrow down the choices at third base again. So for the most part, we are mostly, for the most part, I would say we're down to Turner. Uh, and then of course there's Chris Bryant and Eugenio Suarez, although neither of them's really been mentioned much with the Dodgers lately. Um, but I do think, the I, don't, so, I don't think they're going anywhere just because the central is pretty much, I mean, now that it's kind of up in the air, air. Kind of, it's, it's kind of wide open for, yeah. Teams. Cubs and yeah, Reds still have a chance to make the playoffs. Yeah, it's up in the air what's going on in the Central. Um, but I think the whole thing's weird with Turner. Here's my thing. Like, we're supposed to be having players show up to camp in two weeks. Why hasn't two weeks? Why hasn't Turner signed? If the Dodgers really wanted to bring him back and he really wants to come back, why is he not back? So in my mind, this is clearly on a Dodgers terms only scenario. There's no way they bring him back on what they don't want. 
Um, so I don't know what's going to happen. There's no point in talking about this. We've given our opinions on it and we just have to wait and see. I, I just think I the think whole thing's weird at this point, like it, that we still honestly, don't know what's happened. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I've always felt like it was inevitable, but as like the players started dwindling down and there was still no news of a signing, I, I started to be like, okay, this is a little weird. Like what's really going on? Yeah. Like that's, that's where I'm at at this point. Like at this point, it's been talked about so much that like, if you're going to do it, let's do it and let's get the news out and let's move on. Um, but at the same time, like it's, it's weird to hear, you haven't really heard any other teams connected to him seriously. So if he's returning, what are we waiting on? Like, I, I don't know. I, I guess we just have to wait I mean, and see. The Blue Jays were in it till they signed Simeon. Yeah, um, that's true. I've heard the, I've heard the Braves. Okay, and I've heard that the Braves don't aren't going to go after Ozuna, so maybe Turner gives them some kind of right-handed potential slash DH if the DH comes back. Um, the, the Braves are doing what now? I I had read I don't I hadn't read from like any legit source, just some people talking on Twitter that the Braves were not going to actually pursue Ozuna anymore. I don't know how true that is though, so I'm just oh yeah, so well, that's I I don't. Interesting. Yeah, so we'll see. Um, there are a couple more rumors, though, that I know you've heard and know a little bit about if you want to lead into those. They're kind of interesting, oh, right. just to finish so, up our Dodger news. This was uh, weird. There's a CBS writer, uh, I don't know how to say his name, Mike Exisa. Um, he wrote five bold predictions uh, before the season starts, and one of the five were uh, the Dodgers were going to trade for Willie Adamus of the uh, Tampa Bay Rays. Uh, Adamus is the shortstop. Mike was saying Adamus was available because he starts arbitration next year. And of course the Rays are notoriously cheap. Um, and the Rays also have the number one prospect in all of baseball since 2019 in Wander Franco. Um, and he's ready to go. Um, so and he also plays short stuff. So he thinks it, the, it makes sense for the Dodgers to do this because he can take over at short for Seager. If the Dodgers don't want to bring Seager back, or um, if they do want to bring Seager back, they can move Seager to third and keep, Adamus at shortstop. Um, so he, he's Adamus is widely known as a, a pretty good defender. He's improved offensively every year, but I mean, he's obviously not Corey Seager. He's nothing great, but he's he's pretty decent. Uh, his main knock is he swings and misses a lot. Uh, his walk rate does continue to go up, so that's that's good news. He does make solid contact. It's nothing spectacular. It's not like Nelson Cruz or Juan Soto, but it it's middling. It's somewhere in the middle and it works for him. Um, so like the Rays are most known for getting the most out of their pitchers, whereas the Dodgers do well with getting most out of their hitters. So the Dodgers probably could unlock something in uh, Adamus. Um, he's under contract for four more years. He's only 25. Um, he was saying that Adamus could play second base this year if Seager doesn't want to move. Um, but where he lost me at is the package for him. He I, said, I was just about to ask what that was. Yeah, he said it was going to be Ruiz and Gray. So how do you feel about that? Uh, I'm My whole thing with Ruiz is I like him. I've always liked him. Uh, he's in abundance. I don't want Josiah Gray going anywhere. I have a hard time wanting to clear that for anything. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but is there much on the offensive side of him to truly like be excited about? I guess that's where I'm kind of curious about. Cause I, I remember mean, in the playoffs, he was not mm -hmm. good at all. Um, no, he, he's, he's not, he's nothing great offensively, but he has shown some upside and he's gotten marginally better. So and again, the, just because the Dodgers are so good at getting things out of players. So the thing is they could he's controllable. He's yes. controllable. He's young. Yes. Um, and he's shown basically sparks of he can do this. We just might need to yes. develop a little better. And the only reason why they're not keeping him is again, they're cheap and they have the number one prospect in baseball since 2019. He's only yeah. 19. Yeah. So, I, so the problem my thing is, is, is I feel like I'm speaking too much from like the heart side of things when I say gray, because I keep telling you how excited I am for him. Uh, I just, I don't know if I'd want to give that up. I'm my biggest thing is pitchers. I do not like giving up pitchers. You, I feel like you can find hitters almost anywhere. Uh, developing very good pitchers. I feel like is difficult. Um, and to have one in your system that sure, maybe he came elsewhere, but he's been there and they've really done a lot of the developing, developing lately and really, uh, 
helped him find where he's great. And he's still learning how to pitch because he was a shortstop in college. Yeah. So I just, I don't know quite how I feel about this. Um, it would make this a lot easier if we knew what was going on with Gavin Lux because he's supposed to also be a shortstop and can play second base as well. Uh, so I, I honestly wish I had an answer for you. I just don't know. I, I don't know if I could give up Josiah Gray. So here's the thing. When we talked about Arenado a while ago and giving up Gray for Arenado, and I said, that's why I cut it off. So if I'm not willing to do that for Arenado, there's not a chance in hell I'm doing it for Artemis or how, sorry, how do you say his name? Um, did, I like him, but there's just there's not, not a chance in hell. So uh, for me, it's too much for my liking. Um, also, the writer said, that there's no way the Dodgers trade May or Gonsolin, so that's where Gray comes in. I think that's bullshit, if I'm going to be honest. I think, sure, they're not going to trade May, but they would 100% yeah. trade Tony G before they trade uh, Gray. Um, I was about to say, again, not trading Gonsolin seems wild compared to Gray. Yeah, so, like, it might just be my bias towards Gray. I don't, I don't know, but, I mean, you see it the same way. I'm sure a lot of fans see it the same way. Um, If if the package was Ruiz and Gonsolin, I'm doing that 100% because Ruiz doesn't really have a spot. Um, and again, Gray projects better than Tony G does. And Tony G might not even be in the rotation this year just because there's no spot for him. Um, and he's already going to be 27 soon. So I, I would have no issue with it being Ruiz and Gonsolin for yeah. Uh, Adamus. Yeah. Uh, Adamus. Um that I would be a little bit more willing, I think, would be if you threw in Gonsolin instead. Um, but again, at the same time, I, I don't entirely or know. Or Mitchell think, White, just somebody not gray. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I don't know if this is correct or not, but this I think kid. I had mentioned this to you. I think Mookie is actually good friends with him, if I remember correctly. Yeah, you told the me World, that. The yeah. World Series. So, um, yeah. So, I, I don't know. I'm... Because we've won the World Series, I feel less inclined to want to give up those younger players that I'm excited to see because I feel less like, let me get this now. I need it now. We need to win now. There isn't as much as that anxiousness. Of course, I want to continue winning. I would love to see him do it again. I'd love to see him go back to back. Um, I just don't know if I want to give up Gray for it. So it's interesting, um, but there's also another one we have to discuss although it really only matters if there's a DH, so. Oh, yeah. Um, so John Heyman said that the Dodgers could be on Nelson Cruz if there's a DH in 2021. Um, so my, my thoughts are, so Cruz is, I think, 40-41, um, but I don't think there's any doubt that he's still an incredible hitter. Um, and this works for the Dodgers because they wouldn't have to commit anything long-term to him. Plus, he's a righty who mashes everything. And since 2015, his hard hit rate has been in the top 5% of the league. Um, I would be all about this, to be honest. A one- or two-year deal worth a shit ton of money, I think, works. It's it's doubtful, but I can see them doing this more than the Ozuna one, just because Ozuna will be four or five years, maybe six, whereas Nelson Cruz would be one, maybe two. Yeah, Nelson Cruz... Uh, intrigues me a lot as a right-handed bat of course only if there's a DH that's where this whole thing's kind of annoying because yeah. um, if they had someone like there in it at the DH spot I'm a little bit less worried about filling that third base hole not because uh, obviously we need a third baseman but I think there's guys that could fill that need a little bit but right, I wouldn't real. feel so attached is to we need a good right-handed bat who can also play third base if we went after yeah. Cruz um I don't know if I see it happening just because I don't know if the Dodgers are going to want to wait that long. I don't know if uh, Cruz is going to want to wait that long to see if the NL brings any of that, but I, I don't know. I like it. I'd love it. If he signed, I think he'd be so much fun to watch uh, in Dodger blue. And I think he'd freaking kill it there. Imagine, especially imagine watching him in Coor at Coors field 12 times a year, how yeah. 10, 12 times a year, like he, that dude would just crush him. And yeah. So if we're, if we're being honest, he's incredible at hitting. Yeah, he is. So that one's interesting. Not going to get my hopes up for it, but uh, if we're going to have a DH... Dare, dare I, I say, is he like a right-handed David Ortiz? I'm thinking. I know we're not on video. I just realized, I just forgot we're not on video, so I'm like, <laughs> went into this silent moment, and I'm like, I don't know. I'm thinking. But hey, you know what? I like those kind of guys, those big dudes that just could come in and crush at any time, any moment. Uh, I never thought I'd be saying this when I say bring the DH to the NL, but... If we don't have it this year, I have a feeling this will be the last year we don't see it. So, um, 
we'll have to see what happens. I'm excited though. I would love to see someone like Nelson Cruz in a Dodger blue. So on to the MLB stuff. Um, some actually really exciting news, fun news kind of is Ken Griffey Jr. has been named as the senior advisor to Rob Manfred. As we all know, baseball kind of sucks when it comes to not the sport itself, but how they go about marketing it, making it fun for kids, talking about it, all of that good stuff. So MLB decided they were going to get him involved. And I think this is fantastic. It's a great way to bring the younger generation into fans. Um, Cause at the end of the day, Ken Griffey Jr. was fun for everybody to watch. Even when baseball was the whole, the unwritten rules, Griffey was doing his whole thing. He's got his beautiful swing. He wears his hat backwards. Um, it's what baseball needs. We already talk about how baseball needs to do a better job of getting into the younger uh, communities of color. And I think this will be great for that. They have a face, a very, very well-known face of the sport that can come out and say, we want to make baseball more like this, make it more enjoyable, all of this kind of stuff. So um, we don't know exactly what he's going to do. Basically his job is help it make, make it become more watchable um, is what they said. But I'm excited to see what he does because yeah. I love this sport. I think Ken Griffey Jr. is great for it. And it, I think it's going to be yeah. a lot of fun. So like, I think I read somewhere that this is going to be about growing the game in minority communities. And so That's I'm amazing. definitely all about this. And um, for those of you that don't know, uh, he is my favorite player of all time. Um, it's really not even close. I absolutely love Ken Griffey Jr. Um, it, is there a better person to do this than Griffey? He's popular. He's genuinely liked by most people. And I think he could relate best to the youth. Um, what was it, 2019, where he had the whole let the kids play thing? Mm -hmm. Because everybody was talking about, oh, you yeah. know, the young guys have too much flair, the, the unwritten rule bullshit, and it's not an old Kurt Schilling white man game anymore. Um, so Griffey did his, you know, let the kids play and yes, let, let the kids play. Let Soto be Soto, let Acuna and Anderson and Fernando Tatis Jr. do their thing without backlash. Tatis Jr. hit a grand slam when they were winning by a lot. Who cares? It's not his fault. Your pitcher sucks ass. Why are yeah. you blaming him? Let players go out there, play with flair. Junior played with flair. Like you mentioned, he had the hat backwards, he smooth swing. He did everything just so cool. Um, so yes, um, I, I give Major League Baseball a lot of shit, um, and it's deserved. Um, but they also deserve praise for this because this legit might be the best thing they've done in a while. Yeah, this is this is huge. Um, I'm I'm just I'm praying, and I don't think Griffey's the kind of guy to allow MLB to do this, so I'm not too worried. But I'm really hoping that MLB isn't just trying to pull some whole let's put a face to this type bullshit, and they're actually going to allow him to. Uh, really get in there and do what he wants to do not just try and make it look like they're trying to do better by bringing in um a, a freaking legend who like i said everybody knows everybody loves so i i genuinely hope they're going to let him go in and do his thing because i think it will be great for baseball um we did have some big trade news so we're heading we're towards the end of this so now we've just got to go through kind of all the uh signings trades going on so there was a very big one that happened in the nl west uh probably not good for baseball but nolan arenado is finally out of the nl west he has been traded to the cardinals over the weekend Ma cardinals managed to acquire him and didn't really have to send over any true prospects uh top prospects anything like that it's not a good move for baseball i don't care what anyone says um basically the best one of the best if not right up there with matt chapman best third baseman in baseball and the team just paid $51 million to basically give him away and say, go play for somebody else. Um, that's insane. They are receiving five players with the main piece being Austin Gomer. But like I said, none of these guys are some like some true prospects, top prospects that are going to come in and take over. Um, it seems to be a general consensus that this was an awful move. Arenado's opt out has been pushed back a year. So now it's, he can opt out after 22, 2022 or 2023. And he has also added an extra year to his contract, keeping him through uh, with the Cardinals until 2027. So he's out of the NL West. However, this is another one of those trades. that's bad for baseball because someone doesn't want to pay their superstar. However, Arenado did want out of there, but it was because the Rockies were not building a very good team around him. So 
I don't know if you have any thoughts um, on this, the, but the Rockies. Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, the the Rockies are a shit show. They're talking about trading Trevor Story too. So it's just like, okay, what are, what are what are we doing here? Like your two best players. So um, obviously, this is a good move for the Cardinals. Um, I don't know what the Rockies were doing. I guess besides doing anything except giving the Dodgers, giving him to the Dodgers. And I mean, that's completely fair. You shouldn't give Aaron Nod to the Dodgers. Um, but one thing I did want to say is everyone is or was worried about Aaron Nod's bat outside of course field. And I'm going to tell you that you shouldn't be. Um, example, Arizona is a severely hitter friendly park as well. And Goldschmidt has done just fine outside of Arizona these last two years. Um, now Goldschmidt does hit the ball harder than Aaron Otto does, but, um, for the most part, they're, they're pretty much even. Um, I, I think now Aaron Otto did have a bit of a regression, but if he goes back to his means, he's, I, he's going to be just fine. So I, it, this year was just a bit of an anomaly, but again, uh, he, him and Goldschmidt have pretty much been similar as, as far as hitters go in Colorado and Arizona who are both hitter friendly parks. So I think uh, Aaron is going to be just fine. I, again, the Rockies are, are dumb. You couldn't even get back a, a top prospect. Did they even get back a top 100 prospect? No, I don't think so. No. I, yeah, no. no. See, what are you doing? You mean to tell me nobody was giving you a top 100 prospect? I know. I, that's what's weird to me that not one person, even if Arenado could opt out after 2021, not one team needed like the Braves where aren't they looking for a third baseman like not one Braves team for, the Nationals looking for a third baseman like again we can take the Dodgers uh, out because you're not doing that but fam the Dodgers probably would have gave you Gavin Lux if we're being honest with you so I mean but the Dodgers definitely would have gave him more I don't know what they would have given him but they would have given him at least better than whatever they got from the Cardinals that oh, much absolutely. I will say so I, I yeah I don't know the whole thing's weird um it, it's bad I feel bad for I feel really bad for Rockies fans because they're actually a really cool fan base. I've been to that stadium multiple times. They're super nice. They show up for their team. Um, They love that team. And I read a tweet. I don't know if you saw it, but in the last six years, the Rockies have spent like 212 million on free agents and they've just not worked out. Um, Granted, the guys they signed weren't really like, oh, these are great signings. A a lot of them were overpaid. Greg Greg Holland was really good in that world series run for the um royals so that one made some sense but i don't recall the other ones that yeah the there was the, like the ian oh, Desmond, jake mcgee jake mcgee yeah. it was stuff like that and it was just kind of like it maybe if you just made a little bit smarter moves you could have had a chance but hey it makes the nl west uh weaker makes the cardinals a little stronger which i'm never a fan of but i i still know at the end of the day their team really doesn't even come close to ours so i'm not stressing about it um, we've seen a couple of more trades. The Mets traded left handed. Can I get a quick note in on the opt outs? Um, he did not get the opt outs pushed back. He got an extra opt out after 22. So he still can opt out after next season. Oh my he, God. And he, and he does He's leaving. An, and he does have an extra year on his contract, guaranteed year on his contract now. So that is how the contract has shifted with the trade. This is probably why well, the Cardinals didn't give up much because there's right. a good chance he opts out after next year. Also, Nolan, see you in Dodger Blue next year. Yeah, I, I the Cardinals seem like such a boring team to begin with, uh, and their fan base I think kind of sucks. Yeah, I don't so, know if they're they're not Giants boring, but they're pretty. No, boring. not Giants boring, but they're yeah. I think it's because Jack Flaherty's cool. I don't know if you know who Clinton Yates is, uh, no. but he was he's a he's on ESPN sometimes. But he was he was going okay. at it with the Cardinal fan base yesterday, telling them how boring they were, and they were getting very mad at him. <laughs> the Cardinal way is the boring way, so um, it's also racist. Yeah, well, yeah, that's not, yeah, we'll see how that turns out there. Uh, but a couple other trades around the league over the last week. The Mets traded left handed pitcher Steven Matz to the Blue Jays last week. Mets returned three, our Mets got three players in return. No one really of significance there. The Orioles traded Alex Cobb to the Angels. They're finally making some move for some starting pitching. Sounds like Bauer is not going there. Kind of, I think we all kind of figured that out um, a while back. His market is dwindling. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Cobb has one year left on his contract, will make 15 million. The uh, Orioles are sending more than half the money and are receiving an infield prospect. Shortstop Didi Gregorius returns to the Phillies on a two-year, $28 million deal. Uh, left-handed pitcher Carlos Rodon, Rodon, however you say that, returns to the White Sox on a one-year, $3 million deal. 
Shortstop Freddie Galvis signs a one-year $1.5 million deal with the Orioles and infielder Tommy LaStella, three-year deal with the Giants. Don't know money on that yet. Three? Yeah. Don't know the money on that though yet. Uh, shortstop Andrelton Simmons, one-year 10.5. Wilson Ramos, I believe he's the catcher. I forgot to write that down. Uh, signs a one-year Wait, two who million. Did, who did Simmons go to? Simmons went to the Twins. Okay. Simmons, Twins, uh, Wilson Ramos, one year, two million with the Tigers. Uh, Sean Doolittle signed with the Reds earlier this morning, one year deal. Not sure the money there, and uh, not that this is a signing or trade. Million. Okay, okay, so performance bonuses. Okay, so one and a half for Sean Doolittle with the Reds, Um, and then this is not a trading or a signing with the U.S. team, but Masahiro Tanaka will no longer be pitching in the MLB and will return to Japan to continue his career there after spending seven seasons with the Yankees. And then last but not least, uh, Dustin Pedroia announced his retirement yesterday. He had a 14 year career basically ended uh, when Manny Machado Machado. slid into his knee at second base. He never really returned the same after that. So that is why a lot of baseball, especially Red Sox fans hate Manny Machado. Um, But so, yeah, other than that, that Uh, was really it. Did did you see fan graphs say that the the Yankees are going to have the best team in 2021? Did they really? Yeah, they had them one. They had Dodgers two and Padres three. Uh, I swear to God, the Yankees are that team that everyone says every year, and they do nothing, nothing. After Cole, their rotations a bunch injured, of guys that might be broken. People. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I mean, even if they are healthy, what the fuck. Not I'm still not Dodgers taking Cole. Uh, yeah, I'm still not taking that rotation over the Dodgers or the Padres or maybe even the Braves. I'm not. There's no way. <laughs> Like even the Mets, even the Mets are putting together a solid, even the Mets are putting it. I wouldn't put them. I don't like the Yankees will be decent, but the Mets, the Blue the Blue Jays are, I don't know. I'm not going to say they're better, but they're getting up. They're going to fight. You got the White Sox. That's wild. I I respect fan grass, but I just, that's, that's wrong to me. Um, Also, another thing is, you know, we're talking about uh, Trevor Bowers market dwindling. Uh, I mean, uh, did I send you that? Did I send you that video? Of, Tra- of Trevor Bauer yesterday? No. Uh, no. There's a video apparently that he proposed posted on his Momentum YouTube channel. Oh, I you he said post. I was like, no, Ew. he. Uh, I, I did, but I messed that up. He posted on his YouTube channel. Um, they are setting up a whole ass thing to announce his free agency. So a lot of people are assuming it comes this week. I'm this very much motherfucker. I'm very much James. hoping. I'm praying. Oh, everybody in the comments was like, he's really about to announce he's taking his talents to uh, Queens. Um, I honestly well, cannot if wait. Walker for Buehler a... had to say he'd be in, he'd be in a Dodger uniform because Walker Buehler said yeah, he wanted him. I did see that. Um, I will well, say it makes sense. I... They, they both seem like assholes, so it works. Yeah, yeah, Buehler. Yeah, Buehler. Buehler at least seems like just. But Buehler like, seems like an asshole in a good yeah, way. Yeah, on the field, like to be a winner yeah. type thing. That that I'm cool with. You need that on the field. You need that kind of fire from your guys. I and like it. Again, I've said this before. I'm not a fan of, of Trevor Bauer, but I do appreciate the swag he has when he pitches. I listen, None of that bothers me at all. I don't care about it. any of that. I, I, that, I'm I totally thoroughly fine enjoy him watching him striking him out and then him walking like he's Conor, Conor McGregor. McGregor yeah. man or, this shit. whole crack in the beard. Did you see him do that? Great. I love a play with he, he I like a, it. He struck a guy out and cracked a beer and pretended to drink it on the mound. Um, Listen, that shit is cool. I like all that. The off the field stuff, though, like, chill well, out, bro. So that's what I'm wondering. Like, first of all, there's no way the Dodgers would be letting him do a release like this first before media. I just don't see it happening. Um, the Dodgers aren't going to allow any one player to be put above the team. Just doesn't work that way with them. Um, I am waiting though and hoping that a reporter is going to leak the news to which team he signed for before he has a chance because honestly I could oh, see it since there's a beef a, it's going to be John Heyman I could see oh for sure John Heyman's just dying like reaching out to everyone like tell me where <laughs> Bauer's going so I can tweet about it but Bro. like I can't wait to see what's going to happen because this definitely seems like a Mets thing in my mind the Mets need public publicity uh, Steve Cohen deleted his Twitter account after that whole stocks thing last week happened I'm um, just trying to make a living like the rest of you. So you the, shut your whiny ass up. The Mets need some positive stuff right now. And I would not be surprised to see Bauer sign in his contract that I get to release mm-hmm. this. Yeah. So with that said, I think that's it for this week. We've been going on about just about an hour now. So um, okay. 
I have a feeling next week, the week after that, we'll hopefully, hopefully we can actually talk about some baseball stuff and not some, oh, well, if the season's like this, it'll be like this. Hopefully we can talk about next week. We're going to be seeing players at uh, I mean, spring if, training. If the players are showing up spring training, then a, a lot of signs got to happen. Ozuna's got to sign somewhere. Nelson Cruz got to sign somewhere. Bauer has to sign somewhere. There's others that I'm blanking on, but there's a lot of open spots for people. So we have to start seeing a Florida move sooner or later. Yeah. So I'm excited. Um, As always, we appreciate you guys listening. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Follow us on social media at Dodger Yard on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. You can find me at Randy underscore Radcliffe on Twitter and Instagram. And you can go to allmylinks.com slash Konu and you can find all my social medias on there. And we will catch you guys next week. Uh, Have a good rest. Did you see that the Angels didn't even fire Callaway? They just suspended him. So I was reading, okay, so I just literally saw that right now, and I was reading the Angels reporter said that they fully expect the Angels to uh, fire him. However, protocol, they have to go through investigations and do all of that. So he said, I fully expect them to fire and probably very soon, but team needs to conduct conduct investigation and go through proper employment channels before they can just fire him. So um, They should have went through proper channels before hiring him. him. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah. yeah. MLB's got a lot they need yeah. to fix up. So um, until we talk to you guys next week, we hope you guys have a good rest of your morning, night, afternoon, weekend, whatever it is you listen to this. And we'll talk to you then. Bye, guys. See you later, guys. <laughs>